So uh, today I'm going to give a talk on the motivated integration um, for the long key medium varieties. Uh, uh, actually, it's uh, for the long key medium and long key space. Uh, this is the first uh, the first talk. So so uh, I will introduce the work of uh, of the neurons. And uh, they work on the motivated integration for a smooth uh, rigid variety. So before I introduce the motivated integration on the rigid variety, first let's recall the basic fact about the formal scheme. And uh, so let's uh, let's recall the fact about the fact about the formal scheme. Uh, which is uh, over R. So in our settings, we always choose uh, uh, formal skin X and over uh, uh, completely DVR uh, with R. So here R is uh, completely DVR. And, uh, so, so now this guy, we assume that our formal skin is uh, it's a separated type with the finite topological. In general, because uh, if R, so here R is a DVR, so all the cases we can always assume that this formal scheme is a separate type with a final type. So if we con you consider the any arbitrary evaluation ring, so R is a no longer a DVR, so in general we will assume this uh, formal scheme is a separate type with uh, uh, final presented because for the general evaluation ring, it's not a uh, no theorem ring. So, okay, so now uh, let's think about two cases for our DVR. So by the basic fact of from the local field, we know that if R is, uh, if R is equal, characteristic, uh, so we, we always have the R, we have a structure theory for R. R is always isomorphic to the K, smaller K, with the formal power theory P. So here P is that you can consider as the, the uniform aligner of this uh, DVR. So we have such kind of resort. And no matter which, no matter what, the characteristics of R is uh, zero or positive. And if we have a mixed characteristic, we have uh, if R is uh, mixed characteristics, uh, so so in this case it's quite quite more complicated than this case. In general, if we assume uh, if we assume the the rigid field of a K is perfect. And uh, R is uh, absolutely unramified. So it's absolutely unramified. We have, we have uh, R, we have the structure of R R is isomorphic to the general relative vectoric of uh, the radio field K. And in another other cases, that means if you pick up a completely DVR with a perfect radio field K, if it's not unramified, so we can always consider R as a absolutely ramifications of for the weighted vectorial of a K. Okay, so this is what we are working on the formal scheme over the two cases of R, okay? And now, what do we need to do? We need to consider the motivated integration for the uh, formal scheme X. So the first step for us is to construct the, the uh, integration spaces for the, inter for the motivated integration. So in the classical case, we know our, uh, in the classical case, We know our integration space. It's uh, 
it's R scheme, it's a L X if we where where X is algebraic radius uh, over over a field K. So in general, in most cases, we choose K as a complex number, and we know that this guy could keep could be considered as a uh, functor, this guy, which is a P, if we pick up uh, another uh, varieties over K, so this guy could could be defined as a um, home of a T cross K, and the K with a form of power theory, and here's a as this kind of param parameterization. So in our cases, we need to define the so-called, we need to define, to define, to define the Greenberg scheme. Uh, so here is, uh, we use uh, the notation GR X to define such kind of a scheme as our integration space. Okay, so how to define the scheme? So in, our, in, the, in the classical case, we know that this arc scheme, it's a pro scheme. So that means we can define it as a pro project limitation of a, of a scheme. So in this case, we can also use a similar way. But in this case, it's a difficult thing that is a, this formal scheme is over a general complete DVR. So, in order to define the corresponding functor, we need to think about, we need to deal with a mixed characteristic case. Okay. So, so the first step for us is to try to, uh, to do the similar uh, generalization. Okay. So, um, so what we need to do is to first thing we, we need to think about a functor uh, which is uh, defined as uh, oh okay 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 the first step for us is to define a factor or uh, HN star. So this functor is uh, from the uh, from the scheme over over uh, over a, a smaller k uh, to the set. Oh, sorry, to the scheme over the the Rn. So here Rn, which is uh, Rn, which is uh, the end truncation for the uh, for, uh, for the complete DVR, which is defined by the maximum I deal with uh, the power is n plus one. Okay. So so now this functor is defined as h n star uh, t. We define uh, we associate this guy as another scheme such that such that. Uh, so you can say that this guy, uh, HN star, up star T, as a pair, is, which has the same uh, underlying topological space of the T, and but the structure sheaf as, uh, as RN, the curly RN, uh, OT. So here is a strange thing is that the curly RN you can just uh, think about it. Uh, oh, sorry. Here and here R n, here R n, O t, which is uh, the sheaf of a uh, home, uh, home k, and uh, goes to t with uh, the curvy R n. So, in general cases, in the classical cases, we have R n, we have R. Is uh, we know the struct by the structural theory. We know R is a form of power theory, like the key, uh, key. and R n 
Rn could be defined as a K, T, and modulo with a T with power n plus one. So in this case, we can we can always consider Rn as as a K algebra. But uh, and also, if you think about if you have a, a functor, if you have a functor to assign each K or each RK algebra to if you have functor. So if you have functor F, think about a functor. So this is your functor to assign each K algebra, uh, each K algebra. For example, uh, A, that will assign to, to assign A to A uh, T module T n plus one. So you can see that this functor is representable by the affine space with the dimension n plus one. Is that right? So this guy, F could be representable by this thing. F could be is uh, k n plus one. So you can easily think about here, right? Because how you can see here, you can you you can always consider this guy as uh, set, set theoretically. Set theoretically, you can consider this guy as a k n plus one, right? So if you have such kind of functor, you can represent f by the affine scheme over k with the dimension n plus one. So this is a, a equal characteristic case, but how about for the mixed characteristic case? So in that case, you, you, can, you can think about in the mixed characteristic case R, Rn is R modulo, the maximum ideal with power n plus one. So if you take the most uh, uh, trivial case that is, uh, you can take Rn, for example, you can take Rn as uh, uh, Z, D modulo with uh, T with power n plus one. So in this case, you cannot consider this guy as a general FP algebra. But, uh, but you can still find a ring scheme which parameterized the, uh, the any uh, K algebra as a, as a, set theoretically as a, as a Victoria K space with a dimension of n plus one. So that guy, if you think about the general cases, that guy should be, uh, so this guy, if you, so in this case, you can, you can easily see that Rn, which is isomorphic to the n minus truncated of Fp. So, but this guy is a, it's a general weighted vector with the analysis, and you can find the ring scheme. It's a still as a, the Rn in this case is still as a, a k with n plus one. A different thing is that the ring scheme structure map are different. So even though those cases are both cases is representable by the affine space with the dimension n plus one, but, but they are two different ring scheme, okay? On that part, in the mixed characteristic part, the ring, uh, ring scheme structure map are the weighted multiplication. But in this part, it's, uh, it's, it's different, okay? So, so now once we have this functor, we can see that for Hn star, if you work on the affine case, if you work on the affine case spec of A, if A is a K algebra, so you can get the, uh, you can get Rn canceling uh, with uh, Wk and over uh, W. So in the, in the classical case, you can just take K and A. So you get the, the, this guy. You get the, the form power serial truncate modulo T with R n plus one. But in the mixed characteristic case, we get this guy. This guy is also represented by the 
affine scheme with k um, with symmetry and plus one. Okay. And uh, then we can define another functor. It's in the mixed characteristic case g r n x n. So this guy p is which is defined by the home of uh, R n, which is H n upstart uh, p, goes to X n. So here X n, where X n, which is as uh, the formal scheme tensor in uh, this guy is over R and uh, over R n. So this guy is a, it's a general it's a general scheme over R n, and this guy. In the Greenberg's uh, original paper, he proved this guy, this functor is uh, it's a representable. Okay, and uh, then he takes a limitation because for here we get we have uh, the project limitation for in the formal scheme, so we can naturally to take the projective limitation for this functor. Then we can define. The GR uh, with curve X, which is defined by limit of uh, the project limit of uh, GRN XN. And also, this is a functor which parameterized any T as, uh, as home of uh, R. And here's a H star T. So this is uh, the, the project limitation of location uh, with uh, with a curve in, uh, x, in the, which is over the formal scheme of a of a complex form. Okay, so this guy is our integration space. Our integration space of formal scheme of uh, x uh, this guy as uh, over r. Uh, no, it's uh, the T is uh, so here is uh, you can consider this Greenberg functor GRX, which is uh, you can consider it as a scheme over K, right? And uh, O goes to the the set, and this guy is a representative. So, so this is our basic definition for the integration space, which is called as a uh, the Greenberg scheme. So to deal with, uh, I will talk about later why we need to deal with uh, using this kind of way to deal with uh, uh, the formal scheme for R. But here, let's say it's uh, the natural generalization for us to deal with a mixed characteristic case. Okay. So, uh, questions? So, so before I go to further to, to talk about as a more details about this this themes and the talk about the integration, so let uh, let me give you some remarks of the, some recently uh, some correction between this guy and uh, the uh, and the log arithmetic scheme, and uh, there is a resort. And so let me see. So there are something could done so the so 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 how do you say it's the the log structure? Right, let me see. Uh, 
of the function. On the Greenberg scheme, the GR curved x. Okay, so okay. So let's first uh, see that the construction. By uh, Keller, Taru. Uh, so first thing he gave a natural log structure on the jet stream. So in the classical case, we know that we have a jet stream. Oh, sorry, the the n n dense we call I I call this n dense of RC. Okay, so this guy. Which we know that this guy is a, it's a functor by the form of the, should be uh, I think here should be k and uh, e cross k and here's the uh, e with n plus one and x okay okay so. So, so we have another kind of uh, the arc scheme with n -ins, with a log structure. So how to define this? So a log x we have a correspondent division by by the Carlo Carew, and uh, if he is a log scheme. Okay, so if you you can. Uh, to define here is uh, uh, k u is the log structure m p, and for k, for k here, you consider the trivial log structure. If you consider a trivial log structure, that means you consider the it's over a spec k, and uh, the 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 sheaf of monoid is just as a unit of this uh, this field. It's, so you can consider it a k star. And for this guy, for this jet scheme with uh, with a plus one, for this guy, you consider a log structure of uh, m j n, which is also considered as consider it a uh, trivial log structure. Okay, consider it as k p modulo p m plus one star. Okay. So you can easy to calculate this guy as uh, it's uh, all the the invertible element inside here is uh, it's uh, just as uh, the a zero plus a one p and plus uh, a n with t with power n and the modulo uh, p with uh, n plus one such that uh, the a zero is not equal to zero. Right. So you can get this, and uh, he proved that if we if we take any log scheme for x for any log scheme for any x is uh, so perhaps there's a there's some restriction on the on the log structure should be fine, but there's no saturated fine. And uh, here it is. If this guy the fine log scheme over over k, over this guy, over the over k with the log structure, and uh, this functor is also representable by a log scheme. So here is a log structure on this functor. So this functor is also representable, and also you can also take the pro projective limitation for this functor. You will get you will and they prove that. The proj limitation for this functor is also representable by a log scheme. Okay, so you have uh, you have L infinity log x is representable. Okay, and uh, and they give uh, the construct as a correspondent. Uh, Construct the correspondent uh, motivate integration 
theories on on this uh, integration space of X. So this is in the classical case of the generalization. Okay, so how about this case? How about for the 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 Greenberg scheme? So there is a simple calculation. That is the uh, uh, let me see. So okay, so in the affine case, in affine case we know that G R N with X N. And this guy, oh, sorry, oh, yeah, this guy, which is, uh, we take a, take a, a skin P, variety P, and we know that this guy is the home of uh, Rn, uh, and Hnt, Hn star T, with uh, the Xn. So you may think about how can we, how can we give the natural log structure on the H and star T, right? So how can we get, give the, how to give the a proper log structure on the H and T, H and up star T? Okay. So in the offline case, you can see that this guy, in the offline case, we have uh, the H and op star T. Uh, so you can replace T by a K algebra. Okay. Uh, we know that this guy is a, it's a spec of uh, Rn tensoring the Weighty vectoric WK to WA. Okay. So how can we give us uh, the log structure on this ring? So, but this is another. You cannot just only give the log structure on the log on th this ring because we know that the the category of uh, affine log scheme are not equivalent to the category of a log ring. It's not equivalent. It's not. Uh, in the basic al algebraic geometry, we know that the the rings category are uh, contravary equivalent to the category affine scheme. But the, in the log geometry, the category log ring is not equivalent to the the category of affine log scheme. I think, yeah. So, uh, so how can we give the the log structure on here? So if you consider a simplest case, this guy, because we assume K is a, it's a perfect field, right? So WK is a DVR. It's a complete DVR. And we can we can give the natural log structure on the on this DVR. And Rn, you can you can try to so Rn, you, you can just give the trivial, the, the log structure on Rn. Now, how about Wa? Uh, in this case, you can try to uh, think about there's a natural uh, log structure on here. That is, uh, So if T is T is a log scheme, and we have we can associate a log weight scheme to T, which is uh, you can define the weight endings W and T, which has a spec of uh, weight vectoric of the with the endings of T. And the, the log structure associated to this affine scheme, MT, 
uh, perhaps uh, this, oh, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, M W N P. We can give the as as uh, the M M T uh, direct sum with the kernel of the W N T star. Those two uh, O T star. So this is a this is a associated to the which is uh, this is uh, defined by a Cartier Cartol, which uh, when he start uh, to study the critical nine cohomology for the log scheme, and he defined such kind of uh, associated witty log scheme associated to any uh, log scheme, and you can verify do some simple cal calculation. You can verify that if you think about the equal characteristic case. This guy, this log structure is coincide with the, the trivial structure of the jet scheme. So naturally, there's a possible way to think about if you give the, the, the weighty log structure on here, and uh, we use a product log structure on the H star A, you can, you can try to show that this factor is, uh, is also in, representable in the log arithmetic world. And actually, it's uh, following the the classical arc log arc scene. You can we can try to we can guess if this function or if this if this is representable, and uh, if this guy, if gr, if you all takes a takes a uh, the project limitation for this guy log of x n, if this guy is uh, representable. This is just a question. Okay, so let's continue to talk about our main topic of today. That is, uh, uh, we need to talk about the motivated integration on the formal scheme. Okay, so what's the relation between? So this is the integration space. So let's recall that our G R. Probably x is the integration space. <clears throat> For the motivated integration on the formal scheme. So naturally, we will have the correspondent motivated integration on the formal scheme. And before I give the rigorous definition for the motivated integration, for a formal scheme, let's first recall why we need the motivated integration for a formal scheme to define the motivated integration of the rigid variety. So I think this is more important. You can, if you are interested in the motivated integration for a formal scheme, you can read this paper by the detail. But let me first to tell you the relations between the formal scheme and rigid variety. So there are two different ways to define the rigid variety. The one way is uh, is ad hoc way to use a use a tight method. Another way you we can use more algebraic method. That is uh, so let's recall the relation between formal scheme. And uh, rigid variety. Okay. So the the relation between these two guys are so direct that is a uh, one way we have functor. We call it as a generic fiber functor. And use uh, R I G to represent this functor. This functor will send any Formal scheme, and, and actually, it's not any formal scheme. It's a, should be assumed that it's a cost compact and uh, I think it's a cost separated. I, I can't remember, but uh, you can 
topological side, we can make the, the property of this form, formal scan as good as possible. And we can, this function will send the formal scan over the DV, over any evaluation we actually do. Here R, we don't have uh, the restriction for the DVR to the rigid variety. To the rigid variety over K. So how can I do that? We can just uh, take the generic fibers of this guy. So you can think about this guy is a uh, it's a locally ranged space over the over a spec R, and you take the generic fiber of uh, this guy. Okay, so this is uh, it's a uh, it's a rigid space. So naturally, you can think about this way. If you think about example, for example, so you can take the most uh, trivial case. You can uh, let me think about if you take an algebraic formal scheme. So if you take the x, so first let's take a, take x as a affine space, uh, like this. And uh, we have a morphism, structural morphism to here, spec r. And then you take the pre-image of the maximum ideal inside this DVR. So you will get another closed subscheme inside this affine space. And we do the completion along the, we do the completion along this uh, subscheme, we get an algebraic formal scheme. So that means we do the completion along so the maximum idea of R. So we get a standard uh, formal affine scheme over the formal scheme of a complete DVR. And uh, so this guy, you can represent it as a SPF of uh, R with uh, x point to x ten. And the topological property on here is uh, just uh, the pi-adic uh, topology on this ring. So because we're doing a completion, so you can think about here here as uh, R x one to x n, which is. Uh, the project limitation of the R x1 to xn and modulo the union formalizer of the omega n plus one like this. Okay. So the topology topology on this ring is just as uh, the phi addict the topology on this ring. And once we get this, we can to define the the generic fiber of this guy that we that will give you the the if you take the generic fiber of this guy generic fiber of this guy I use k and you can just uh, to define the the rigid affine. To directly define this, you can see that this functor is uh, satisfied the the gluing property. So you can you can take any formal scheme and to decompose them into affine pieces and use this functor and then gluing them together, you will get a, a rich variety. And uh, the most important thing is that this functor we can do we have a factorization for this guy that is a formal below this up. That is, uh, you can, you can take uh, this guy over R to the rigid varieties over K, and uh, you can do the localization for this function as a formal scheme over R, and the localization is as inverse. And we can get a isomorphic equipment. So this guy, S here, we 
which is a morphism of a formal below itself. So in this side, we can see that uh, for every rigid variety K, in, actually it's a cost compact and a cost separate. If you consider K as a, as a discrete value, you can just consider it as no theorem and the rigid varieties. We can always find a formal models, which is up to the formal below itself. So we get, so that means you can, for any, for any rigid variety K, so you can find a, there is a, exist a form of models over R such that uh, the, the R X with uh, under this, uh, the generic fiber of this guy is isomorphic to X. And uh, also, if we have a form of below itself, this means if we have form below itself x prime to x, if this is form of below itself, then we'll not change the rigid property for this uh, general fiber. So we have uh, the x prime, okay, is isomorphic to xk and isomorphic to x. Any questions? Oh, here. You mean uh, this ring? Yeah. This is a standard kind of algebra. That is, uh, uh, this is a so here is uh, the K X1, Xn. It's defined as uh, uh, F, which is uh, belong to the form of power series with n variables. Oh, sorry. Here's a uh, capital K, capital K, such that, such that if we write the F as a sigma N and A N and X N, oh, sorry, A I X I, uh, we should use uh, the, the Victory index here, perhaps it's more, it's better. So, such that the, uh, each, each AI associated with here is uh, such that AI is uh, converged to zero, like this. Yeah. So you can think, consider this guy is, uh, it says uh, this guy has a one-to-one -one correspondent to, so here this guy has a one-to-one -one cons correspondent to the unit of n-dimensional point, it's like zero. Uh, and uh, over the, let me see, uh, gamma extension or the uh, algebraic closures for a kid like this. So, so this guy is a, this guy is a ball. This guy, this guy is defined as the, the, the xi, where is uh, belong to the kn such that the each media for this ball is a, it's a smaller equal than one. That's kind of the dimensional minimum. So you can see that the, the spec, oh sorry, the spec of this guy, the spec of this guy is one to one correspond to here. And the spec of this guy is a, takes a, in the classical rigid geometry, it takes a maximum ideal for, for the tight algebra. Okay. So now we can, similarly, we can fall in the way for our uh, Francisco to define the uh, motivated measures for the Greenberg scheme. So I, I think I don't have time to talk about here today. 
So let me find something interesting, I think. So the, there is some, oh. There is some connection between the motivated uh, measures between the defined for a green bar scheme and the general R scheme. That is, uh, if we take If we take X as a vertex over K, so you will see that the, the motivated measure for the X with a completion of R coincide with the The, the motivated integration on the arcs in X. And the next thing is, uh, if next time I have a time, so I will talk about is uh, motivated integration and uh, change of variable formula in detail. But today, let's allow me to talk about this same so. Uh, we have, uh, so let me first uh, give you the formula is that if we have, uh, uh, let me see. So on the Greenberg scheme, we defined the measurable set, which is uh, on the Greenberg scheme, GRX. And for any uh, the major uh, function A goes to the union with infinity, where alpha, oh sorry, where A is a measurable subset of a, of the Greenberg scheme, and we, we can define this guy, we can define as associate motivated integration as a D mu, which is a sum of the then belong to Z mu with the alpha inverse N with L. So this is how we generally define the motivated integrations on the four muscle. And uh, for the for the any uh, rigid variety, roughly speaking, we just uh, take the integration of a rigid variety as uh, the integration of the models of this guy. And in the paper, they prove that the integration, if we take a rigid variety, we take the form models, so we can define associate integration on this form models. And this integration is not depends on the model we choose. This is how we defined the motivated integration on the for a given rigid varieties. So on the Berkeley space, the relation on the Berkeley space, what I want to talk about a little bit, that is uh, if you think about a Berkeley space on the if we take the in the trivial valuation case, valuation case, uh, we can for uh, x over k, k is a valuation ring. We can define the there is all already have the there's work I can remember. We can define the motivated integration on the amnotification of this guy. So, but this guy, if we consider a trivial valuation based field, uh, this guy is uh, we can decompose this guy into actually this integration. It's uh, defined on the skeleton for the, the skeleton for for x, where this is a retraction for of the amnotification of x of x. And if we talk about, we deal with uh, the k varieties over a discrete value field. So this seems we, 
the identification of this variety is, uh, depends on the model we choose. More precisely, that we have uh, the identification space, AN, it's a projective uh, uh, limit for the SK, X. So I don't use it, I don't want to do this. It's uh, you can choose uh, this in S and C, where, uh, where this X is the S and C model. Of X. So that means uh, the special fiber for this model is uh, just uh, the global crossing divisors. So, because in the trivial case, uh, we we have uh, we have uh, there's, there's work has been done by I can't remember the names, but the, there's work on the for the motivated integration on the a notification of varieties. Actually, this guy is uh, in terms of, uh, could be described in terms of integration on the skeleton of this guy. And uh, for the discrete value case, we can use uh, the project projective uh, limitation case to try to define the multiple integration on the skeleton, depends on the model, but takes a limitation for that guy. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah. And are you also mentioning the rigid case that it's like it doesn't depend on the model expression? Yeah. So it's like this. Yeah, next time if we can talk about more details on here. Yeah. So for a, for a rigid variety, we can take a formal model. And uh, then we can define the associate for a chosen. Uh, Differential forms we can define the motivated integration uh, for a rigid variety in terms of a motivated integration of the formal scheme. And on that part, if we can define it, because in the trivial case we already have the motivated integration for the identification of varieties in terms of uh, mode, in terms of actually in terms of integration on the skeleton, because this guy lives in the Euclidean space. Euclidean space. So this this is a polyhedron, right? Yeah, it's a. So this guy is a living side Euclidean space. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, but this guy is also living side Euclidean space. We can try to. I think there's this is a way for us to to define the multiplet integration for the Berkowitz space over the non-trivial, at least for the discrete value of the field. Or the non discrete value field is always hard. Yeah. So I think I, I can stop here today, and uh, we don't have much time to go into a lot of detail for here. And uh, next time, yeah, we can go into some detail if you're interested in.